In this tree of life, the leaves represent species that are alive today, and the branches show us how those species got there. By comparing the DNA of living species and following it back into the past, we then come to a point where they all join, and that point is called LUCA, the last universal common ancestor. And it's here that life first diverged into two types of life, two domains. How many domains of life are there? What did LUCA diverge into? So here's LUCA, the origin of life here, LUCA here, and then what did it diverge into? What were these first, what was the first divergence in the tree of life? Well, here we have prokaryotes, and here we have eukaryotes. And let's look now, for example, here's a eukaryote that's a very basic one. This is a, a parasite, it's giardia, and this is what it looks like. And I just wanted to let you know that here are people over here and corn and fungi, but here's a giardia, it's a parasite. So we saw this plot before, and this is essentially a way of understanding uh, the phylogenetic tree of eukaryotes. So let's look a little bit more on eukaryotes before we go further. So here are all the eukaryotes, and that giardia that I talked about is right here. And it is a member of this group called excavates, which are right here in this color. Now, other large groupings, there's, well, we think that the root of the tree of eukaryotes might be here in this excavate branch. Here are fungi, animals, and amoeba, and together those groups, that group is called amorphia, or ammo. <laughs> then everybody else, including green plants and red algae and a bunch of weird uh, plant-like things, are called diaphoretiches, and I'll just call them dia. So, the division between ammo and dia happened right here, if here's the root. So we can make a plot that says, okay, here's where the red, the red dot here is right here. And this is Lika, the last eukaryotic common ancestor. And then ammo and dia separated at the blue dot here further more recently. Now, here's that tree again. We just talked about the eukaryotes. Here are the prokaryotes. And then in 1977, the prokaryotes got enormously larger because the archaea were discovered by these two guys, Woes and Fox. And so it's a whole new branch of prokaryotes. They're so different from bacteria that they have another name. These are bacteria over here, and these are archaea over here. So there were three domains of life, bacteria, archaea, and eukaryotes. Now, if the root of the tree here is in the bacteria, then this is the phylogenetic tree that you get. If the root is here in the archaea, then this is the phylogenetic tree that you get. And if the root is there in the eukaryotes, then you have this phylogenetic tree. Now here's another tree made by Doolittle, 1999, and it shows those, uh, the yellow at the bottom are mitochondria from the alpha proteobacteria, and they're entering the eukaryotes very early on, and then along come the cyanobacteria producing the plants. But again, you can see that there are three domains. Now here's another plot, and again, there are three domains here. We have the eukaryotes, we have the bacteria, and we have the archaea. Here's another tree that was made. Again, three domains. We have the eukaryota, we have the bacteria, and the archaea. Notice how they're all separate from each other. Here's another plot. We have eukaryotes, bacteria, and archaea, all separate, separate three domains. But recently, we found that the eukaryotes are not a separate domain. Rather, they have emerged out of the archaea. Now, this is something that's hard. The, the importance of this is hard to overestimate. So what we need to do is put the eukaryotes right there in the archaea. So three domains have turned into two, bacteria and archaea. And this is what the new phylogenetic tree looks like, where the eukaryotes in green are embedded within the archaea. So, in terms of the domains of life, the old system, pre-1980, there were two domains. There were bacteria and there were eukaryotes. And then three domains because of Woes and the Fox. And from for the last, for 1980 to 2010, there were three domains, bacteria, archaea, and eukaryotes. And you will still see this among many people. We'll talk about the three domains of life. But more recently, 
Post-2010, for example, the eukaryotes are now embedded in the archaea, and that is a fundamental change in our understanding of the phylogenetic tree of life. So to summarize, three domains turned into two domains with the eukaryotes embedded in the archaea on the right. Now, on the left, the eukaryotes are a separate domain, and all archaea are equally close to all eukaryotes. And all eukaryotes are equally close to all archaea. And on the right, the eukaryotes are embedded within the archaea. And the branch on the right, those archaea, are more closely related to eukaryotes than other archaea are related to eukaryotes. And they're called Asgard. And we'll see more of them soon. Let's talk about recent progress in archaeology. So here are three domains. We have the archaea, bacteria, and eukarya. And then what happened was the eukaryotes here got put inside of the archaea. And so three domains turned into two domains. And then more progress was made, and oh, we found out all kinds of different types of archaea. For example, the TAC group here. And then even more progress, this group was found, the Asgards were found, and they were the group that were the closest branching to the eukaryotes. And that's, these are our closest relatives. Eukaryotes are well embedded in the archaea. And that's why we can call ourselves archaea. Now, there are some people who aren't happy with that. And they say, you know what? Eukaryotes are a mixture of bacteria and archaea. For example, if you look at the metabolism of eukaryotes, it's more closely related to bacteria than it is to archaea. But if you look at the reproduction in eukaryotes, well, that's more closely related to archaea. So in some sense, we are mixtures. Now, how many domains of life are there? Well, if the tree of Luca, the tree of life at Luca is dominated by divergences, then of course there's one, there are two domains. One, two. There they are. <laughs> now, here's that tree of life again. And here are the two domains. There's bacteria and there are archaea. Notice that the eukaryotes are embedded in the archaea. See that, the green. Now, placing the eukaryotes, now you have to be very careful here, because placing the eukaryotes on the edge here makes you think that, well, maybe they're separate. It makes it look like the eukaryotes are not embedded. It makes it look like maybe this line goes to here. But it doesn't. This connection of eukaryotes is here, not deep here. If it were deep here, then we would have three domains. So it looks like there are still three domains instead of two. And, uh, Let's look at another guy. He's this is Cavalier Smith in 2006. And he has a wonderful paper, but it's really complicated. He made this diagram, really a mess, a confusogram. But down here is the origin of life with some Negi bacteria and some other things. And here are the archaea right here. And here, all of these are bacteria. So you can see that the archaebacteria are a type of bacteria. And out of them, with the mitochondria, come the eukaryotes. So, if we did a phylogenetic tree simpler than that, we have Negi bacteria down here, we have all of bacteria here, then we have archaea coming out, and then we have eukaryotes over here. So really we have just one domain, and then here are these two subdomains. Um, and down here we have something, maybe eobacteria or chlorobacteria. You'll have to ask Cavalier Smith what those terms mean. But he's not saying this. He's not saying that bacteria are here and the eukaryotes are inside of the Archaea, no, no, he's saying that they're separate. Now, I'd like to end this with talking about a, a prob maybe a better model that we can do. Now, these are, it's called the Statistical Tree of Life, STOL, and it was done uh, by Prigbo here. This is in Eugene Kunin's group. And the idea here is, let's make a tree not of species, but of genes. We can call these things species, but the genes, some genes, if you do a statistical analysis, then, yeah, you get something here, and then it statistically splits here, and it statistically splits here. But the genes don't always follow the phylogenetic branch of the majority. Sometimes you get horizontal gene, chan gene transfer, and that will be important later on when we try to understand all of the crazy, promiscuous horizontal gene transfer that occurs earlier on in the origin of life. So Luca, the last universal common ancestor, diverged here into two types of life. But what were those? Was it archaea on one side and bacteria on the other? Or was this a divergence among the bacteria, two types of bacteria? Or was it 
between two types of archaea? We don't know. But this tree, this tree with its simple divergences, branches diverging into two, is probably too simple to represent the complicated network of genes that we saw in the statistical tree of life. We need a better tree. We need a tree where the branches are made out of braided vines, and the vines diverge, and they split, and they jump onto other branches and become braided into them. It would be a real mess, but uh, that's life.